Hello, hello, my lovely angels. This is your girl Sim back with another episode of the Sim Squad. Hi! This video is going to be a little long, fair warning, <laughs> but I'm going to put timestamps so you can skip to the part where you want to skip to or you can watch the whole video if you like. Uh, I have my go to summer collection for now. So, summer has started in UAE and I had to like make choices because I want to put them like ahead in the you know shelves on the shelves now this is going to be part one i'm sure because <laughs> there's so many perfumes that i want to use in uh, summer so many of them are summer appropriate there's some that are old some that are new today i'm covering some that were my favorites last year plus the new ones the next video will probably be like more of like old ones which i already had for over a year and i had them last summer as well but i'll try to see if i can make some new ones as well in that so you asked for it, the summer favorites. <laughs> Let me start off with like the freshies, the ones which I think are super fresh and I can wear these during daytime, like without really thinking much about it. Uh, the first one, of course, is from the Tafa. It is the Musammam White Intense. This is a gorgeous fruity gourmand or more like citrus gourmand where you have like citrus fruits some sort of like uh, little spices and then you have like a lot of vanilla tonka or like some kind of like gourmand sweetness going on on fragrantica it got 4.59 so it's a very very loved perfume this was like for me an obsession right from the beginning i insanely gravitated towards it and i used it a lot in winter as well because i had bought this in winter but I know for a fact that in summer, this is going to be like used up. It's a stunning scent. I probably will want to like take this to the office and keep it there because on day-to-day -day basis, this is going to be amazing. This smells like Cellar Times by Louis Vuitton and I have not smelled that perfume. But from the feedback I've got from all of y'all, uh, you have said that it smells quite literally the same as uh, Louis Vuitton Cellar Time. What's good about this perfume is that it lasts for a very long time as well, which is like amazing. Although like it has like this heavy citrus opening and everything and the citrus note carries on like from the beginning till the end and then you know I feel like this one is quite linear doesn't change much so if you're looking for like a gourmand citrus scent this would be my top favorite right there. The top notes for this are bergamot, orange and spices, middle notes of coconut, mahonial, ylang ylang and ambroxan and the base notes of sandalwood, benzoin and musk. They have not mentioned any tonka bean, they have not mentioned any vanilla but I'm pretty certain it's there. I know the sandalwood is adding the creaminess, musk is adding like the creaminess and sweetness as well, but there's no way in the world that I would believe that this does not have vanilla and uh, or tonka or one of those notes, you know. The coconut over here also is quite prominent and you can smell it and that's why it's giving this like a very fresh summery feel. This is going to be probably like probably the top perfume I'll be using in summer. I'm not starting off strong, you know. This is unisex, well, although I feel like this was appropriate for all season daytime, I think it sh it'll shine more in spring summer. The projection is like 3 to 4 feet and the longevity is at least like 7 hours. This is like a 10 out of 10 perfume for me. I loved it so much. Uh, the price was yeah, US dollars 35 when I bought it. I'm pretty sure this will be like a little bit more discounted now, so you can like check it out. I'll try and put links that work for a change <laughs> let's see and the celebrity i had chosen for this was jenna ortega i was like yeah 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 all the way that's her it's like very different very quirky but at the same time it's fresh and doesn't feel very um mature it smells like young youthful also it has like class and grace which i really like the next one for me is um uh, armaf's club de nuit untold now first of all the bottle is like super stunning sorry it's a little crusty and dirty because this bottle does like take on your fingerprints like easily this one is a deep for br 540 your francis cook dijan baccarat rouge 540 now i have the baccarat rouge original i had bought the discovery set if you guys remember and i have smelled it while the baccarat rouge <laughs> the quality is really different right so that if you know you know like when you wear that like you can smell that perfume on yourself like the second day till the next day if you don't take a shower yeah this one is getting better and better the more it macerates initially when i got this i was not very impressed because it was like okay it evaporates very fast and because it's already an ozonic airy kind of perfume i was just like dude this is not gonna last you know 
And yeah, it was not lasting very long initially, but now I feel it lasts at least eight hours. Still not giving the performance of Baccarat Rouge, but then you pay the price, you know. <laughs> so would you rather top up and everything? Also, Baccarat Rouge has this uh, roundness about it, which is like very well sealed edges, you know, it's like very rounded. This one is slightly crude on the edges, not as smooth. But honestly, if you do not have Baccarat Rouge and if even a normal person on the streets, if you wear this perfume, they'll assume you're wearing Baccarat Rouge. And although people say like this is more suitable for evenings and like cooler weather and everything, I think this is like an all year round fragrance. But in summer, I gravitated towards it a lot more because it feels cooling, it feels nice, um, it feels airy, it doesn't choke you, it doesn't like, cause any sort of cloying, you know, or migraines or anything. I love this perfume. So... I don't want to talk too much about this perfume because if you know the BR540 DNA, you know exactly how this is going to smell like. I had a lot of dupes, by the way, which I kind of gave away to my friends and family and everything. I retained this one because I was like, you know what? This is definitely worth keeping. This is again unisex. The projection is like three feet and the longevity now it's like eight plus hours. So this one doesn't go away from you easily. The top notes for this are saffron and jasmine, middle notes of amberwood and ambergris, and the base notes of fur resin and cedar. On Fragrantica, it's got 4.33. My rating for this is nine out of 10, simply because it's a dupe of like a very, very, very close dupe of a perfume that I really like. And if you guys remember, I went through this phase where I stopped liking all the BR540 perfumes and then I stopped wearing them and then when I came back to it I like it much more now and also I can smell this on fewer people now which is like making me interested in coming back to it as well and the celebrity I thought of was Tilda Swinston because I was like she's like very out of this world her beauty is very out of this world but when I smell this perfume like instantly I could only think of one person and it was her the next one is for everybody who likes aquatic scents that are slightly sweet and floral. You don't have to look any further. This is cheap as chips and it's a little difficult to find because it's an old perfume now. Uh, over here it was only sold for like 12 to 15 dollars. It still is actually available but I know that a lot of you all tried to find this perfume elsewhere. It was tough to find. It's definitely worth sourcing for, right? This is Chiffon by Al Haramein. First of all, I think the bottle is absolutely stunning. It's a very, very pretty bottle. And the perfume is very sweet, very floral, and very aquatic. Like, it's a, this is supposed to be the due for Aqua di Gio. People might think it's a little confusing because it does smell like masculine when you spray it. This is a sheeper floral. They call it like a sheeper perfume where you feel slight bit of like um, uh, the fur, you know, the pine and all that. But at the same time, you have like a little bit of citrus, you have some woods, you know, combined with some kind of florals. The top notes for this are green notes, bergamot, lemon, rosemary, tamarind and spices, very strange notes. Middle notes of lily of the valley, jasmine, palisander rosewood, rose and orris root. And the base notes of musk, cedar, amber and patchouli. To make it simple, yes, it starts off very green citrusy. It's very definitely bergamot and not any other citruses. It does have some greenness about it which changes like very very fast for it to start revealing the water lily and jasmine it has quite a bit of sweetness as well which i wonder where it's coming from because nothing over here like kind of dictates the fact that it's a sweet note you know but over here maybe it's the it's a lot of florals that's giving it or maybe it's the orris root orris root normally makes perfumes powdery this is not even close to being powdery it's a very very aquatic scent it feels like somebody just came out of water. Think of that James Bond scene where he comes out of <laughs> something like that. And they already had perfume and now it's combined with the C notes. And, you know, it just gives you this beautiful, beautiful scent. Now, this could be a girl or a guy, but I chose Bradley Cooper for this because I was like, that dude does smell like he wears like cheaper perfumes, you know, not really like very spicy, very masculine, like sort of fragrance. This is a very unisex fragrance, by the way. I will wear this a lot now that it's summer because I, again, want to feel cold. And all these perfumes that I'm initially mentioning, these are all going to make you feel cooler. My rating for this is 8 out of 10, maybe 8.5 because like I've not smelled anything like this recently. I mean, I've smelled this before, like Aqua di Gio and all that. I have not smelled this Aqua di Gao Goya and all this, these recent ones, I have not like really gotten into it. And I wasn't missing the Aqua di Gio phase or cool Davidoff cool water phase, you know, I was really not like missing it at all. Till I smelled this perfume and I realized that I was actually missing it, you know. And I'm glad I have at least one of these aquatic scents in my collection now, 
because I know in summer this is like stunning and it's beautiful. The projection is like 2-3 to three feet and the longevity I would give it like 7 hours. On Fragrantica this is called 4.47 which is a lot and it's a dirt cheap perfume like $12 I got it over here. I'm sure over there it must be not more than $20. Next we have a perfume that I recently reviewed and I am absolutely obsessed with it. It is by Khadlaj Perfumes from their Lee Prestige line and this is the Empress. This is probably the only green perfume like proper green herbaceous very lemony zesty but very very herbaceous this again like super feels like super cold it gives you that feeling when you chew on any seeds you know that feeling you get that coldness but not really cold cold the perfume i can think of closest to this was oud for happiness by initio if you want to see the full review, I've recently done this one, so you can go and see the full review over here. I'm just going to give you some of its characteristics and how I feel about this perfume. This is 100% 10 out of 10 perfume for me. It's very, very stunning. It's one of the very few green perfumes that I like. That's saying a lot because green perfumes like irritate me. This is like done just right. Listen to the notes. Top notes of ginger, bergamot and herbaceous accord. Middle notes of rose, violet and jasmine. And the base notes of patchouli, vetiver and cedar wood. Now, when they say rose, violet and jasmine, think of all these notes being only 1% of the perfume. So it's not really there, like present up front. It is there in the background doing something, but you don't realize it's jasmine, violet or rose. The main things that you smell over here is the bergamot, ginger and the herbaceous note, along with um, your earthy notes like uh, vetiver and patchouli. And then you have some cedar wood as well. Oh, like this perfume, like really got me. I can't stop smelling it like every time I spray it I'm like you know should I just wear it right now you know and then I have to stop myself I'm like you need to go through a lot of perfumes I have to record a lot of videos today by the way guys because I have like Ramadan going on and it's not easy to manage time in Ramadan like it's a whole thing and I'm gonna have like relatives coming very soon uh, and then I will not be able to film so I need to at least post two videos a week so I'll have to pre-film everything why am I saying all this to you guys don't care <laughs> So 101% like gorgeous, beautiful fragrance. I love it, love it, love it. I think it's perfectly unisex. Uh, it's suitable for summer, especially. I don't even think like spring also you can wear it, but in summer this is gonna shine like next level. It projects like three feet at least and the longevity is seven to eight hours. I just know this perfume is gonna keep maturing and maturing and the power, the longevity and everything is gonna become much, much longer. And the celebrity I'd given this to was Henry Cavill Physique and Benedict Cumberbatch, the way his personality is, you know. <laughs> it is priced as uh, US dollars 40 as of now. And I keep saying this because a lot of people say that they don't know where to buy Khadlaj perfumes from. Go to their website, their official website, click on the icon which says WhatsApp, click on that and just chat with them. They'll give you a solution. Next, we have a perfume which is in the testing phase with me right now. <laughs> but initial impression i liked it and that's why i'm adding this to this summer collection this is the mayar natural intense so you know i have a problem with the name of this perfume but it does like when you say natural intense it does kind of feel very nature very like how i imagine a fake perfume should smell like now compared to empress compared to chiffon which also has the green notes this one feels like stems, grass, it's that kind of green, right? And even the fig in this, it's not a fig that will be sweet and juicy. Well, actually figs, are they ever juicy? <laughs> They're very fleshy, right? They're not like juicy, but like, it's not like that sweet smell of fig. It's the green smell of fig before you open it and if you smell the fig, how it smells like. Right now, like everything about it is very green, literally feels like a mild, uh, breeze passing through with carrying like other notes which I'm going to mention right now and you are mowing grass freshly like cut grass and you're getting whiffs of this perf someone's perfume or uh, the wind carrying certain scents you know so it is definitely super green so if you do not like like perfumes I personally also do not like perfumes that smell like stem or grass or something but this has something very strange in it and I again I'm not being able to decide like will i like go for it will i reach for it but i do want to wear it a couple of days and see how i feel throughout the day you know when i actually go out and stuff so that's why i put this in my collection because i know that i will be wanting to try this i will gravitate towards it plus the bottle is like absolutely stunning like you know so i know i'll be like reaching for it but these two colors are very similar by the way 
There are a lot of green bottles. Okay. This one has got 4.38 on Fragrantica, so people are liking it. By the way, that initial very, very green thing does subside to reveal like a little bit of sweetness, little bit of that. I'll tell you the notes that are very, very prominent. It's water lily and lotus, like once it like starts mellowing down. The top notes for this are fig, green tangerine, coconut water and melon. Middle notes of water lily, jasmine and lotus. And the base notes of vanilla, sandalwood, abroxan and musk. Now, initially, of course, it's like all the green sort of weirdness. <laughs> then you have the melon, which is also not the fleshy middle part. It's the corners. You know, it's like very, very green. Coconut is there but if i had not read it in the notes i probably would have not noticed the coconut oil i'll be very frank with you but i do like once it starts settling down maybe in 15 minutes you start smelling the water lily jasmine and the lotus which is very very prominent the prominent florals surprisingly is not jasmine it's the water lily and the uh, lotus if you find the lotus flower intriguing uh, it's india's national flower by the way uh, and we see it like everywhere. So we, growing up, like we never respect it. <laughs> now this one is compared to Armani Aqua di Goya, which is the recent one. It's the green bottle. I'll put a picture somewhere over here. This is considered to be a fruity floral, but I honestly think it's a green floral. After some time, the fig note completely disappears. And I'm just wondering like, why is fig the first note? Because maybe it's just there initially as a top note, which is why it's mentioned in the top note. But otherwise, let's just call it like a water lily, lotus, you know, those kind of water flowers. The perfume is predominantly that with green notes, with a lot of green notes. There's no Middle Eastern vibe check in this. It projects very well. It projects three to four feet. The longevity, I would say right now, is like six hours, pushing it to seven hours. But um, I wouldn't mind like wearing this during daytime and then transitioning to a sweeter perfume. Like I would add like some more layers to it of a different perfume and trans transition to a evening perfume. My rating for this right now is an 8 out of 10 just because it's really, really fascinating and intriguing me. Now, if you get this, be patient for 15 minutes because initial spray, I guarantee you, you'll be like, why have I ordered this? It's too green. It's too realistic stems and grass, right? Just wait for the water lily and lotus to reveal itself along with your uh, sweetness of uh, vanilla and um, sandalwood and musk. I forgot what celebrity I had given to this. I'll mention it like if I remember. Now this is the end of the freshies. Now what I'm going to suggest are sweeter perfumes. The first one, of course, without fail, without any question, will be Arabiyat's Lamsat Harir. This one is a stunning cola perfume. Now, when I had smelled the Paris Corners Cherry Cola, I had assumed it would smell like this because when initially I smelled this perfume, look at how much I've used. And by the way, I've gifted a lot of people this perfume. I've used up like a lot of bottles of this. I first bought this bottle from a petrol station. <laughs> That's how Arabiyat was sold, you know. Now it's online everywhere and it's very, very cheap. I got this for $12. And on Fragrantica, it's got 4.26. So it starts off with, uh, by the way, like a lot of people confuse this perfume. When I wear this, people ask me if I'm wearing C Armani. So this was like kind of a dupe. First year, it's very, very close, right? The top notes are grape and blackcurrant. Middle notes of tuberose, heliotrope and jasmine. And the base notes of musk, patchouli and cedar. So that black currant and grape in the opening just give you, gives you this cola scent, which is like a flavored cola. I don't even know what to call that cola. And initially I told you guys it does smell like cherry cola. Like what, you know, what you call a cherry cola and it just smells like sweet and fruity, but it has that strong cola note in it. Grape over here is quite strong, but then very quickly the tuberose and heliotrope come into the picture. So you do smell like like really pretty white florals and the tuberose is not very indolic along with jasmine. Jasmine also over here is not indolic. They come in the form of a very pretty bouquet of flowers, you know. So imagine cherry cola with like a bouquet of like beautiful like light scented flowers. Although jasmine and <laughs> tuberose are one of the strongest ones. But in this it's like done in a very light way. It also has, has this toothpaste kind of mintiness which I like. And I don't know what it's coming from but the base notes are patchouli, musk and cedar. So maybe it's a cedar mixed with tuberose or something that's giving it that pepperminty uh, toothpaste. But not like, don't think of peppermint oil or something. Like literally how the toothpaste smells like. I think this perfume is like stunning for the price for everything. I love it. Although the bottle is like super tacky and everything. I don't care. I'll keep wearing this perfume. I absolutely love, 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 love it. This is super feminine, by the way. I don't think a dude can pull this off. It's like literally like Armani. See how sweet it is, right? For me, this is like all season. I wear this perfume all the time, but in summer, especially spring, summer, this one elevates your looks 
whether it's evening wear, whether it's like your day-to-day -day daily wear. I actually wear this a lot to the office as well and I get compliments like crazy. The projection is like a good three to four feet. Longevity, I would say, is like, it's exactly like Armani C. It is eight plus hours, but the power reduces. I keep spraying it again and again because I love that initial blast of like the uh, black current and the uh, grape. I've given this an 8.5 out of 10. I don't even really know why I did that. This is 10 out of 10 in my books. It's beautiful. It's dirt cheap and it's stunning. Doesn't feel cheap. Doesn't feel like something that you would grab from a petrol station, which I actually literally did. But uh, it's a stunning perfume. And the celebrity I'd given this to was um, Megan Fox from Jennifer's Body. Yeah, feels like very feminine, sexy, very youthful, very playful but also it has like this sensual allure, you know? I love this fragrance. Next we have our <laughs> oldie, but this is like a perfume that I'm sure you guys must be expecting. It's Haya from Latafa. It's this nice soft bottle. You feel so nice when you wear it. I don't want to put it on my face because all my makeup, which is like a ton of makeup. <laughs> Everybody who says I look beautiful, thank you very much. But if you put so much makeup on a tree, it'll also look good. <laughs> oh immediately you feel like cold cold this perfume makes you feel cold like literally snow cold kind of a thing you know this is a sweet flu fruity floral so initially it starts off very fruity but then it starts like slowing down and moving into uh floral scent but i can tell you one thing for sure from the top to bottom it's very cold very refreshing scent the top notes for this are pink champagne pink berries blood orange and pink freesia so much of pink you know and then the middle notes of gardenia vanilla orchid and jasmine and the base notes of praline, amber, and sandalwood. It has all the yummy notes. It has all the beautiful flowers that I absolutely love. The gardenia can be very overpowering, and I am always very wary of if some if the magnolia note is mentioned. I'm careful to first check how I feel about it because it can be quite overpowering, especially when it's combined with jasmine, you know. But in this, the balance is so good that actually the pink champagne, pink berries, blood orange, pink freesia, those are like definitely dominating the perfume from the beginning till the end. And the gardenia, vanilla, orchid and jasmine are playing a supportive role. And then you have the sweetness of praline, but it's not that cloying, choky praline. It's again done in a very subtle way. You have your amber, which adds this resinous sweetness. And then you have your sandalwood, which adds a little bit of the sweet creaminess. Feels literally like a silk, pink silk cloth. And if you would, you know, like when I wear this, uh, when I smell this perfume, I would probably want to wear like a pink dress, which would probably be like this kind of texture, like very silky. I absolutely love this fragrance. This is very summer daytime, summer evening also. If you're going to the beach or something, oh my gosh, it's going to be like a stunning fragrance. The projection for this, unfortunately, is like arm's length or maybe like arm and a half, you know, <laughs> one and a half feet. And uh, the projection, uh, sorry, the longevity probably is like six hours. So you do have to respray this again and again. I remember this was like 80 dirhams or 85 dirhams, so which is like uh, maybe 20 to 25 dollars. I'll put the exact price for you because I need to see the updated price for this one. This one for me is an 8 out of 10. It's a stunning scent. And the celebrity I thought was uh, Mary Jean from um, the first one. Chris, Kirst, Kirsten's, no, that's Kirsten. Chris. Smells like very much like her, very like, um, very Mary Jean, the way she was in that movie. Now next, of course, I had to add a fruity fragrance and I know you guys know which one is coming up. It's Khadlaj Amiral, uh, sorry, Amiral Sultan. Harim Al Sultan. The bottle is so beautiful. It literally feels like I'm holding a crystal, quartz, uh, clear quartz crystal. It's very sharp, by the way. But the perfume is probably, that's the reason why this one was viral, right? So this was released as a perfume oil first and now they have released this uh, perfume spray, which I'm so happy about because Oil formats are difficult for me. I can only use those during weekends and stuff where I have time to get ready because I would mix that with lotion and wear it and then spray something like this over the top. Oh my goodness, this perfume changes drastically. Opens up very gummy bearish, very sweet, like this very strong fruity notes. And then it's like changes completely into a floral perfume and then like, like it like settles down and becomes like a very musky fragrance. The top notes for this are rose and bergamot, middle notes of nutmeg, jasmine and amber, and the base notes of agarwood, sandalwood and patchouli. It retails for around 40 to 42 dollars. I think now it's 40 dollars and you know what, like these notes, like it doesn't, 
do justice to what the perfume is. Like, just think of that initial blast of gummy berries. It literally feels like you're opening a pack of Haribo and like taking a long hard sniff <laughs> into it. Uh, and then like it starts like smelling very like dainty, very light, very mellow florals. And ultimately setting, settling down to a very mild, woody, sandalwood kind of scent. There's apparently agarwood in this, I can't like really tell. It's there probably to add some kind of quality, maybe like a woodiness, but it doesn't smell like your generic uh, agarwood. It doesn't smell barnyardy, it doesn't smell like oud at all. This perfume again, nutmeg by the way, I can't smell it either, which is like very strange. Like nutmeg is something that normally dominates perfumes, but this one is just like a good, very beautiful mixture of gummy bears light florals and your sandalwood <laughs> which is why i feel like this is a super fresh perfume again it makes you feel like sweet but at the same time not cloying it makes you feel summery fresh but also super sweet at the same time i love this scent it is stunning i have not stopped raving about this perfume for a very very long time and there's no question to why this was viral there are a lot of perfumes that go viral and i tell you i do not agree but this one is just next level i See now it's like some time has passed by, it's becoming like a creamy floral. You can wear this on its own or you can layer it, use for layering as well with like a lot of different perfumes. Like try it, you know, although I do think it's a blind buy, if you like like fruity floral fragrances, go for it, yeah. This one projects around like three feet. The more it's sitting, the more it's macerating. I can even tell from the color. Initially when I bought it, it was almost transparent. Now it's like turning darker. The projection I would say is like uh, two to three feet. And the longevity, I would give it seven hours. It'll settle down on your skin and stay like very, very to the skin. But if you want it to project a little bit, you'll have to keep spraying it after every four and a half, five hours. I don't quite remember the celebrity I'd given this to. Should I change my celebrity? Because I'm sure I will not get it right this time because the perfume I feel has like kind of matured. It has changed a little bit. I don't know why, but that... Mary Antoinette chick is coming in my head again and again for all these fragrances. Anything that's like super fresh, fruity and floral, I just imagine, immediately go to Kirsten Dunst, you know, it's like very strange. But I'll see if I can think of another celebrity and I'll put the picture over here. Now I'm moving on to the last three, which are going to be my summer evening fragrances, like a summer dress up perfume. You can wear any of these actually, but like these are specifically Maybe you would want to skip wearing these during daytime. I would, but like, just be a little bit more careful. This one is Emir by Latafa. And I know I've been like being, I have been very quiet about this one. If you remember the packaging, it was stunning. You open it, this light goes on and you know, this thing is sitting in there like being very, very like cool. Uh, I think this might trigger some people's trypophobia, the um, packaging. It looks very expensive, feels very cheap because it's like all plastic on top. The cap is also like not very cheap feeling. It is a little bit heavy. The perfume, however, this is like, again, a beautiful, spicy citrus perfume with a lot of Arabian touches. So this does feel very Middle Eastern heavy. Like the moment you lay your nose in it, it's quite spicy, but it has something about it that gives off the Middle Eastern vibe. The top notes for this are lemon, bergamot, juniper berries and clary sage. Middle notes of cardamom, white tea, sandalwood and olibinum. And the base notes of ambergris, cashmere, patchouli and cedar wood. Agar wood and everything in it. The Middle Eastern vibe, I think I'm getting it from the spices because it's quite strong on the cardamom. Not as strong as your uh, amber root tobacco edition. But you can still smell the cardamom very freshly over here. Combined with like a lot of green herbal scents again. Over here, the lemon and bergamot are really, really strong along with your juniper berry and your uh, clary sage, like kind of gives you that very aromatic uh, feeling as well. So it does like initially smell very, very green, but then the spices like cardamom and everything, it makes, gives that perfume a little bit of sweetness as well. Like I know cardamom when you smell it and taste it doesn't smell sweet, but it's just an association of that scent with us. Like you feel, when you think of cardamom, it just gives like a spicy sweetness. And then of course it has like these strange notes like white tea and everything which makes it again very very stunning sandalwood olibanum ambergris giving it a slight bit animalic uh, uh, effect of course it's woody as well and then that little earthiness now you might ask me like what's the difference between this one and empress and that's actually a some question i just asked myself oh they're heavily different because that empress is very green herbal and it has like the slight, slight uh, woody, earthy nuances. This one has a lot of spices. 
I would classify this as a spicy woody fragrance. On Fragrantica, it's got 3.9 only. I have no idea why. I think it's a beautiful fragrance, but maybe people feel it's a little too masculine and they had advertised this as a unisex. But a person who's not used to wearing like such strong Middle Eastern fragrances that are super spicy, they will immediately think of it as a uh, masculine fragrance. In my opinion, this is like a unisex perfume. It apparently smells like Elysium by Roja. I've not smelled that, obviously, because it's like I would think twice before entering the Roja showroom, you know. It feels very zesty and zesty is the right word. It's very like fresh, zesty, sparkly, refreshing, spicy, citrus scent. Don't have to think too much about it. Just grab it, wear it, and go out. Perfect for summer. Yes, it is leaning masculine. So my girlies don't don't blind buy this one this is very very polarizing it's definitely going to be super polarizing the moment a perfume goes below four rating on fragrantica i feel you need to try the perfume before you wear it because it's going to be very very subjective after that this perfume projects like crazy it's four to five feet i'm not kidding <laughs> you spray it it just like travels you know but the longevity on this one still is six feet and i had bought this some a while ago and it's still not like fully macerated i feel and i think it's going to get better and better and usually such perfumes do last a long time but because it has a strong citrus opening which like after some time disappears and mellows down and like settles down to a very earthy woody scent you know and at that point it kind of like reduces the intensity very very drastically so that's why i feel like you will have to respray it after six hours i would give this like a 7.5 out of 10 just because the performance is not spectacular but Will it stop me from reaching for this perfume during summer? No, I will wear this, especially if I have to go out in the evening and stuff. I'll wear this. And the celebrity also, like, I would think of like somebody like Idris, Idris Alba, like someone like him wearing this perfume. It's very strong, very powerful, but at the same time, zesty and bubbly. Now the second last one, which I think I'd included this in last year's <laughs> thing as well. This is... Creation de Rive by Khadlach. Okay, first of all, this all these bottles of it. I just have three of them. I am planning to get my hands on the artistic, epoch artistic, artistic or something. Like that one was out of stock for the longest time, but I've off late seen it on their website and I might order it because it's a mango scent and I want to try it and review it for you guys. This one, oh my goodness. It's like, okay, so this immediately goes into that category of noir perfume. So everybody, you know who you are. You know if you like that noir scent. It's a little classic as well, feels very plummy, like it kind of reminds me of Gucci by Gucci. This definitely doesn't have that guava touch to consider it to be Gucci by Gucci, but it does smell like something very classic. It does give me a little bit of Noir de Noir as well, you know, by Tom Ford. Like it's, I feel like it's a mixture of Gucci by Gucci and Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. Let me tell you the notes for this. It starts off with pepper and incense, so it's, yeah, it's heavy on incense. The middle notes of Ambroxan and Vetiver super earthy and resinous and the base notes of cedar wood patchouli and gaik wood so yeah let's call, call it like an incensey earthy scent it feels very strange to say this but like earthy incensey feeling but at the same time it has something about it that feels summery it feels fresh it feels like something i would want to wear to feel cooler and again it has that cooling sensation i think it's spectacular this perfume is very very mysterious and like very alluring it feels dark it feels vampy it feels like something that you're not supposed to come across you know and see like very like vampire giving me very much of a vampire vibe strangely modern and like traditional but you know that feeling of having some kind of resin in it which might be like myrrh or frankincense something that's giving it that very very cold feeling and surprisingly, it's not listed over here. Now, when they say incense, maybe it, that incense is a combination of incense sticks as well as some resins. I don't know. But this one definitely is quite smoky. That pepper is there, but not really in a disturbing way where you'll want to sneeze or something or it bothers you in some way. It's more like there present as a form of bitterness. It's like, God forbid, if you take a bite of that pepper, you know that bitter feeling you get without the smell and without the spice, but that bitter taste. It's there like that. It feels like it's raining on a hot summer day in a wooded area, like wooded area in the sense like a forest or something where the earth was very dry, but now it's wet. And you know, the, the smell that comes out of earth, it's that scent mixed with some incense. And 
what a beautiful fragrance and i know a lot of people had criticized me for giving it a very high rating and they were like they don't smell it i don't know what you're experiencing or where you bought your perfume from mine is super strong it's eight hours plus this perfume is 10 out of 10 for me like hands down you guys know i love this perfume the projection is like two to three feet not more than that but the longevity initially yes it was like six hours now it's increased i feel it lasts me more than eight hours again this is around 40 dollars i'm sure you can get it like discounted khadlaj currently is running some discount for ramadan i think it's 20 percent or something or 25 percent i'm not sure so go to the website as a matter of fact even latafa they have a 25 percent sale going on so see if you can avail any of these uh, offers the moment a perfume leans in the tom ford direction i immediately think of constantine keanu Reeves as constantine you know very much that vibe oh very very beautiful fragrance now last but not least is a recent discovery this is again by Latafa and this is the Vintage Radio. Now this one is supposed to be a dupe for Initios Paragon. I had, I have Al Nashama as well by Latafa. And that's something I was not like really happy about because of the soapiness and because of like a very weird electronic note in it, which I feel, a lot of y'all don't feel it. It's some note uh, translating as electronic note to me and I do not like it. This one, on the other hand, I feel it's very, very aromatic, musky fragrance, right? So you have your lavender sage and everything in the opening and then you have the base notes which are a little bit creamy. Strange combination like of having aromatics with creaminess, right? The top notes for this are lavender sage and bergamot. Middle notes of plum, palo santo and black pepper. Middle notes of sandalwood and amberwood. Wow, like beautiful. Like this retails for around $48 which is like a little expensive. On Fragrantica it's got 4.57 and it's classified as an amber woody fragrance. It is beautiful. It ha it is so aromatic. It is so makes you feel calm. Makes you feel relaxed. It makes you feel cool. It's like literally somebody threw a glass of water on your face. You just cold, you know? and you wake up and you feel like nice and everything. I mean, only if you were feeling hot. If otherwise somebody does that, you might probably like analyze that person, you know. <laughs> but like literally, it feels like on a hot summer day, like somebody splashed cold water on you, and you feel very like fresh and nice. This gives me this comfort and warmth as well. Like it's like a hug and I don't feel like I've smelled perfumes like this. It does feel like something from my childhood, like a memory. I really do not know what it is. But and when I say childhood, I mean like when I was a toddler, you know, back then. Not sure. Maybe my dad used to wear some kind of cologne or some kind of something. But it's some memory and I for the love of life, I can't put my finger on it and it's bothering me. This is a good memory, so I feel good about it. And Sam Gold was like same thing, but bad memory. <laughs> this like amazing. I think this is a beautiful fragrance. It deserves all the hype. I know this range, like there were a lot of disappointments. I have not bought half of them. There are these 20 mLs available right now on, on Latafa's website and I can purchase it with 25% discount like I just told you. But I am just like tired of like just buying perfumes and reviewing them constantly like i just want to enjoy the perfumes i have you know and use them and i know you guys want me to review everything but at the same time for me to enjoy the perfumes uh, i might just like take the leap and buy those just because they're 25 percent discounted so i'm going to get it like much much cheaper and they're all 20 ml so i can actually finish them and i will not be too sad and depressed about it that i have spent a lot of money or something because it's just 20 ml right now some people because even for me, I'm getting that feeling. The lavender and sage combined does feel something like, you know, the shaving foams <laughs> men use. They normally have lavender and sage. I remember this. I shouldn't have remembered this because now every time I smell this, I'm going to think of a barber shop, you know. But yeah, that lavender sage is very reminiscent of like shaving creams that men wear. And uh, I've smelled that before because I had used it for shaving once. <laughs> shaving my legs, not my face. But... <laughs> But I know I can just, I just recall that scent and maybe that's why I have that childhood memory because my dad used to use a lot of that uh, shaving foam on his face. Ali does not use his like the electronic stuff and everything but my dad was very much an old school guy with all the kit and everything you know. So it's reminding me of that. <sighs> Finally now I'm at peace because I remember what childhood memory it is you know. This is the perfume I would like to wear while sleeping as well along with the blueberry musk which I got from Arabia, which probably will be in part two. I shouldn't have said that, but okay. This is a perfume that you can wear all weather, all day, 
like suitable for all the time but like I, I, I would prefer this in spring summer when it gets a little bit warmer the projection is like four to five feet which is not bad it does project a lot surprise surprise and the longevity also of this one is like seven to eight hours which is excellent my rating for this is eight out of ten and the reason why I'm not giving a 10 out of 10 is because after it gets over, I'm not sure if I'm going to buy it or not. And now since I smell that uh, shaving cream thing, now I don't know like what's going to happen. So 8 out of 10 for now. And the celebrity I'd given this to was uh, Christensen Hayden, Hayden Christensen, Hayden Christensen uh, as Anakin Skywalker. So that was 11 perfumes. I think I used up a lot of my battery and wow, it's showing uh, one more than one hour of recording. So my... It's going to be a challenge editing this video. <laughs> I'll try to make it as short as possible for you guys so you guys don't have to like go through it. But just watch it on 2x speed guys, you know. And I hope you got like some information from my side. Like when it comes to these perfumes, whether they're going to be suitable for hot weather or not. And what type they are. So maybe you can understand the suitability to you, you know, because these are the perfumes I would wear. And I'm going to put this disclaimer in each and every video of mine from now onwards. Not all of y'all, but some of y'all do question my taste and everything. And I'm like, this is my review, my opinions, not a general opinion. I'm not writing books about it or something to be studied in academia. <laughs> this is like my opinion, personal opinion, right? So um, take it with a grain of salt. Try it for yourself. If you're afraid to blind buy, unless you know my taste, you know what kind of perfumes I like. If that's your taste as well, then go for it, blind buy, you know? But again, like, don't hold me responsible if you receive a perfume and you don't like it. It's just not fair, you know. So that's it for today, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.